<laughs> you are worthy. <laughs> you are worthy. Hi. Worthy of my praise. <laughs> you are the most high. Give on the pass. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hey. Worthy of my praise. And you are holy, holy to be praised. Hi, you are the awesome. You are holy. Here in your presence, I am content. You see in your presence, I am content. Everybody.
and I exalt thee. Oh Lord, Lord. I exalt thee. Hey, I exalt. Somebody lift your hands and worship the Lord. There is 
song is said in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Jesus the Tino I saw for you I saw for you I saw for you I saw for you You, 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 you don't see what is going on there's nothing best you can give to Jesus than your worship. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Savior. Has anybody been saved? Say, I just am an unfunny. Oh, la baba, son of an anamaya. The man you say has come to us. The man you say has come to us. Every part of the Jewish, no call him, call him, save your say. The man you save, that is not for them that call Satan, but if God is your helper, lift your voice and say, Helper. The boy you say, the boy you say, has 
when I don't deserve you. Amazing love showered on me. Amazing love showered on me when I don't deserve you. Amazing love, amazing love. You shower of me, amazing love. You shower love when I don't deserve, when I don't deserve. Amazing love, amazing love. You shower of me, amazing love. You shower of me when I don't deserve. My eyes are so. Ease of her, the wonders your grace, creation power, and all she shines, keep you praise. There was used to turn things around. Your own church has lifted me. You took away the chains and cords that held me. Only shut the end. You are the God of us world. I'm chasing on your path. Only shut the end. You will show me so much mercy. You wonderful, merciful, say, precious Wonderful, merciful, say, and precious redeemer, and pray. Rescue the souls of men. Always 
Precious Redeemer and friend Hold a foot that in line Rescue the souls of men Oh, rescue the souls of Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we want to embrace. First principle for you to know for the story to change, you need to recognize where you are. For the story to change, you need to recognize where you are. Number two, you must be dissatisfied with where you are. Dissatisfaction is the mother of invention and is the mother of creation and is the mother of progress. I said, dissatisfaction is the mother of invention, is the mother of progress, and is the mother of what? Creation. God was dissatisfied with the status quo. So he said, let us do something. God was dissatisfied with the state of man. So he said, it is not good for man to be alone. David was dissatisfied with the status quo of a bully called Goliath, making everybody's life terrible. Anna, the mother of Samuel, was dissatisfied with the status quo. So she goes to the place where she can find solutions. So for there to be a change, you need to, number one, recognize where you are and say to yourself, I don't like this place. So far as you're comfortable at that place, there can be no change. And if God should even come and want to make changes in your life, so far as you're comfortable where you are, it will be very difficult for God to move you unless he pulls you, unless he forces you, unless he kicks you, and let's see, he, 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 what do you call it? He, 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 he creates a storm in your life to move you to where he wants you to go. Yes, God is capable of doing that. But God prefers to work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. In any situation that God forces you to do it, if there is any trouble, he is going to, you are going to say to him, you gave me the trouble. Adam did not ask for a wife. It was God who saw, I need to give Adam a wife. And therefore, at the first sign of trouble, Adam looked at God and said, the woman you gave me. 
So God doesn't like to force us. He works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So God brings you to certain situations or God brings you to certain uh, circumstances and those circumstances mitigate a desire in you for change. Those circumstances mitigate a, 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 a desire in you that I need to do something about it. God needs that desire very much because he wants to work with that desire. And that desire is so important to God that sometimes if the desire is not there, God has to fan the flames of desire. So guess what? Israel was in bondage for 400 years. They were in bondage for 400 years. Until the Bible says, God then one day walked up to Moses and said, the cry of my people has reached me. So you can be in a situation of bondage or you can be in a situation that is contrary to your dreams, your desires, your expectations. And until you get uncomfortable with it and willing to do something, there can be no change. Change is first initiated by recognition. When you recognize that wherever you are is not the best place to be and therefore I need to do something about it. There is a man called Gideon and desire is in him. And so, one time when God comes, God begins to uh, offer him pleasant platitudes about himself. And he said, mighty man of valor. And Gideon looks at his circumstances in Judges chapter 6. He looks at his circumstances and says, what, what the hell are you talking about? I mean, if Gideon was there, Gideon was going to ask God, in unpalatable terms, now which side of the weed are you smoking? The wet side or the dry side? And then, when Gideon began to express his dissatisfaction, he said, where are all the miracles? Why are we in this situation? Why is this there? Why is this there? Then do you recognize what God said? Go in this thy might. So the strength of Gideon was in his desire. I said your strength is in your desire. You say amen. And your desire must be overwhelming that it must push you out of your comfort zone. Your strength is in your desire. The man with the palsy who was lowered by his friend through the roof, he didn't have energy. He didn't have energy to meet Jesus. He didn't have the capacity to even walk. Every part of his body was dead. Now, whether he could talk or not, we don't even know. But the Bible says, now you look, it was not the, him who made the decision for his friends. They came to the door and the door was locked. Or they came to the door, the crowd was too much. He didn't make a decision, I'm going to climb the roof. He didn't make that decision. It was the friends who made that decision. We have come too far to go back. And the desire to see their friend walk was so overwhelming that they climbed the house and began to break down the roof. So Jesus is preaching. Then a cobblestone or something from the roof, a roofing tile falls on his, on his back. Then everybody. You cannot be in a house where the roof is falling and you won't notice it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So one way or the other, they even arrested the, the, the attention of Jesus and they arrested everybody else. So you know what? Nobody else has time to push. Everybody else is looking, why is the roof breaking down? Should we run away or should we stay over here? Here comes the man of desire. Here comes the men who have a strong will. Here comes the men who are ready to make a change. Let me see your desire. Tell me a man who has a desire and he will, he, will, he will make a change. You ask the rapist, forgive me for using that example, but the rapist is propelled by a desire. And that's why he's, he's obvious to plea and to beg him. Desire is the, one, is the thing that fuels action. And therefore, if Anna didn't have desire, I'm sorry for using the, the, this thing, I know that I just felt in my spirit that certain people have been victims of it. So this is not the time to remind them of their pain. 
I sense it in my spirit. And I apologize. But I want to tell you, there's a woman called Anna, and she has a desire. And it is a desire that is the mother of creation. It is the mother that, that it is a desire that is the, the mother of uh, what we call it, uh, invention. It is the mother, desire that is the mother of progress and prosperity. And desire must find an expression. Desire must always find channels of expression. You can have a channel of expression in your desire by your daydreaming. By sitting down and thinking about it. Mm. Or you can have a channel of your desire by prayer. Folks, folks, we are going to start our 21 day fast. I desire change. I desire change in things around me. I desire change in me. I desire change for the building. I desire change for the people of God. God must find a way to locate you and lift you up and make a dramatic change that everybody will notice it. God must find a way to make you, to put laughter in your mouth. God must find a way to create something that men call impossible and give you a testimony and give you a song to sing if you desire it to. And if you believe it, jump from your chair and say, I receive this. I receive this. Satisfaction with what you are and what you have will never mitigate change. In actual fact, satisfaction with what you have and where you are is going to be a, fa is going to be a, a blockade to change. I have one million dollars. So why should, no, no, I, I, yeah, say amen for me. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm prophesying. I'm calling for the things that be not as though they were. I have it, I have it, I have it. And more than that. <laughs> yeah, some, some of you must also say, I have it. Now listen to this very carefully. When somebody comes, you have a million dollars, somebody comes and says, so I'll give you a thousand dollars. Come on, let's be honest. Does it do anything to you? Does it do anything to you? It never does anything. Because you're comparing what is on offer to what you have. But if you have one city and somebody comes and says, I'm giving you a thousand dollars right now. May when you leave this place, somebody meet you and between now and Sunday, may somebody shake your hands with something big. Amen. One of the things that I've realized is that if, if you're comfortable with where you are and you don't question where you are, you're not ready for change. But you need to question it. And that is what Gideon did to God. He said, why this? The questions that you must ask is why. The question that you must ask is when. The question you must ask is how. The question you must ask, but I'll, I'll explain something. You must ask why. And you must be able to say, what is happening? And then you must begin to ask, how? And then you must begin to ask, when? You understand? And then you, can, you must also begin to ask, which? Which man? Which woman? I didn't say which who. Which? You must be able to ask. You must ask questions. Where there are no questions, sometimes there can be no change. Somebody must question what is there. And if you don't question it. And the last thing I like to say before I read my scripture is, if you don't question the status quo, but accept the status quo, you are a sure sign of failure. I refuse to accept that this is the crowd that we have. I refuse to accept that home sales 
are just going to be life cells there, but they're going to grow bigger, bigger, bigger. Out of some of the life cells, we are going to get churches. Amen. We are going to get branches. Amen. I refuse to accept that some of you sitting here are going to stay the same way. This is just the beginning. Amen. Next step by this time, the story has changed. Amen. The story has changed. Amen. Now these are just principles that I'm throwing up before we go to John chapter 5. Time is already gone because I came late. I'm sorry. Old man, Abre. Master Abre. Now let's go. In John chapter 5, there's a powerful story over there. All these principles I gave you, I've given it to you. As, what do you call it? Pillars for change. In John chapter 5, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Yeah. Now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had infirmity, an infirmity thirty and eighty years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. We end here. Can I, can I just break up this first one? He knows where you are at. I said, he knows where you are at. I said, God knows where you are at. Am I talking to somebody? He knows where you are. And he knows you are not in the right place. And he wants to do something about it. He knows. Then turn to somebody and tell the person, he knows. He knows. And it's one of the most comforting feelings that you can ever have. You know, can I tell you something? He knows. And number two, he's ready to make a change. In the name of Jesus. Name may of God Jesus. locate you. Amen. At your place. Jesus. May God locate you at the place of need. In the name of Jesus. And may he make manifest his desire and Jesus, his will Jesus. to make changes in you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, but that's not what I even came to say. Now, the Bible says there was a place, and it was called Bethesda. And it, there was a pool over there. And every time that God, every time there was a messenger, an angel came to stir up the water. An angel came to stir up the water. And the Bible said Jesus began, he walked to that place. And then he walked to the man. And then asked the man, do you want to be healed? And the man began to tell him his story. Ah, that place called Bethesda. Bethesda is, it means in Hebrew, and you see what the Bible said. It didn't just leave us with a name. He said there is something about that name. And that name can be discovered in Hebrew. He was telling us, go look into the Hebrew and locate the meaning of that place Bethesda then you have a better picture and a better understanding of what he was talking about you know what Bethesda means Beth means house like casa in Spanish or Portuguese Beth means house Bethesda is house of kindness it's house of kindness 
There is a house of kindness. But did you see what was happening over there? When men and women come there, they forget the word called kindness. Sometimes survival is such a way that everybody needs to push everybody. And everybody needs to cross everybody. And sometimes life can become very difficult because everybody is competing. But it's a place of kindness. It's a place where everybody is supposed to look at everybody through the eyeglasses of, can I help you? Turn to somebody and say, can I help you? It is a place where God wants to visit people and look at them in the eye and then says, help your brother. The angel will not stop coming. So there's no need for you to be unkind to somebody. But that's the place where they chose to be unkind. How can somebody be there 38 years and nobody, it dawns on nobody? Let's give this man a chance. Let's give this man a chance. He has been here 38 years. But the person who just arrived five minutes ago, he is going to compete with that man. And look at what that man said. I have been here all this while. When the waters are stirred, I believe it is my time to get into the water. Then somebody crosses me. In a house of kindness, there is a house of care. It is also a house of love. It is also a house of mercy. It is a house of brotherly love, filial. It is a house of care. It is a house of mercy. It is a house of unselfishness. Because if you are a very selfish person, you can't be kind. If you don't have mercy, if there are no bowels of mercy in you, you can never be kind. If you don't have any, any love for people, you can't be kind. If you don't have, um, what do you call it, compassion on other people, kindness is sometimes drawn by the, by the, by the uh, what do you call it, the fuel of compassion. Ah, this one is what it shouldn't be. But that is the place where people choose to be unkind. That is where the people choose to be rough with each other. That is where the people choose to be selfish. You can never be kind if you're a selfish person. But you know one thing? When God decides to come, he comes and what man cannot offer you, he offers it to you. What man cannot give to you, God looks you straight in the eye and says, I don't even care the number of years. Jesus. I don't even care the amount of time. Jesus. But I am come. Jesus. And I'll be kind to you. I have ever other. Can you hold my hands? He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. No matter when. I call, I have a fear, I have a fear, he calls, he calls me his own, he'll never leave. Your turn. I go. Your he knows my name. He, he knows, knows my name. He knows. He knows my name. He knows. 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 Oh. He knows my name. He 
walking through your valley. He's walking through your valley. And he's pushing you out. Those high everything. Oh, he sees. He sees. It's you. Pull you out of the valley. He knows where I am. He sees. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. For a visit. It's your turn for a visit. It's your turn for a visit. It's your turn for a visit. From now, from now, from now, from now, I dedicate you to change. I dedicate you to change. Jesus. I have a father. Come on, lift it up with me. I have. He calls me his own. He calls me his own. He'll never ever leave me. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go, no matter where I go. is coming. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my Come on, lift up a prayer wherever you are. Lift up a prayer wherever you are now. He sees. He hears 
God and amazing God. Papa is talking about Papa is talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda and look at the pure practical demonstration. Sometimes God comes into town he doesn't come for the masses. He just comes to one single person. Can we appreciate Papa for powerful time? I'm glad that I came. I don't know about you but I'm happy that I came. Hallelujah. It's time for offering. Last week I was encouraging you and I was telling you that we are talking about a season of change. God changing our story. So if you are talking about God changing our story then you must tell yourself that everything about you will also have to change, including your offering. Turn to someone and tell the person, including your offering. It's not only your prayer, it's not only your commitment, but also your contribution. It must change. Why don't you take something strong, take something powerful, a seed in your hand, speak a word of blessing over it, declare some of the things that Papa has spoken by the Spirit of God over your life tonight and see its manifestation very quickly. If you have done that, the ushers will direct you from the back, please. Let us come and drop in our offerings. Beautiful choir, give us a beautiful song. Come again, darling. Why 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 Everybody, why 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 Hallelujah, let us pray for the offering. The Bible says, See us thou a man whose ways pleased the Lord said he will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. Father, by these offerings, we declare that may we receive mercy, grace, and kindness even from people who don't like us. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody shall shout and scream a better amen. Please be seated in heavenly places. 
If I look at the way things are going and the way Papa has taken off, next week we are starting our prayer and fasting, 21 day prayer and fasting. Every day from Monday. Oh, I thought somebody was going to get excited. It's a good place to clap. You want a change of story, your prayer life must increase, it must change. Hallelujah. From next week, Monday, we are here at 6 o'clock. From the way I see, Papa would like to be here every day, but I want us to just do something. For two, for two minutes, I want you to just rise up. Let's declare strength over him. You can tell that he wants to be, be he wants to ensure that God blesses you just for some two minutes. Can somebody just lift up your voice? You want to pray for strength for Papa. You want to pray that God will exalt his horns like the horns of a unicorn. That he will be anointed with fresh oil. And that the enemy shall not exact upon him. Neither shall the son of wickedness afflict him. Let every yoke around his neck break. Let strength from on high come upon him. The Bible said, though your outward man perishes, your outward man is renewed day by day. Let the strength of God, let the strength of an ox, the strength of a unicorn come upon him in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every spirit of weariness. We speak to your liver. We speak to your tissue. We speak to your intestines that receive the strength of God in the name name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare that because of the mandate upon your man servant, let all forms of wickedness be cast by the root in the name of Jesus. As your people called by your name, we declare strength from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody shall shout and scream a better amen. Amen. Wonderful. So we want to go out there and invite more people. Let them come in for Monday. We are starting the prayer and fasting. So some of you, I told you that we have, you have one week to start cutting down on your food. It will help you. Or some of you struggle. Because by 5.30, Coco and Kose is already in. You cannot do that from next week. Turn to someone and tell the person, you cannot do that from next week. Mr. Ko is laughing because I know that that is the time they bring his breakfast. Wonderful. All right? Yeah, that's the time they bring it. I know. I know. He knows that I know. And Sunday, we are here. First service, 7 a.m. Second service, 10 a.m. You can't afford to miss it. What is happening in the house? I told you that you cannot absent yourself. From any of the meetings. You have to be here on Sundays. You have to be here on Wednesdays. You have to be here for all the prayer days. Because your story is about to change. Oh, I thought somebody was going to shout and scream an amen. <laughs> Wonderful. God bless you for coming. You want to put your hand on your chest. We are taking our LSI mission statement. So who are we? We are a people-oriented church. We are passionate about God's way. We are pursuing his glory. We are persuading others to do the same. Now that you are very good students. Quite without writing. You recited it. Wonderful. someone and tell the person that without fail, certainly as you decide to be committed by prayer, by your contribution then I came to say to you goodness and mercy this year you will not pursue them like you did last year, but goodness and mercy it will pursue you all the days of your life and you will not dwell anywhere but in this very house forever and ever God bless you, we love you, see you here on Sunday, 7 a.m. first service, 10 a.m. second service.